Welcome to U.S. Immigration TV. Well, the October 2021 Visa Bulletin or priority dates have been posted. And the news is very disappointing. This is because there's been little or no movement or advancement in the priority dates. Now you see, October of each year is the start of the new fiscal year for visas when there's a new annual supply of visas both in the family and employment-based categories. Now in the past, ordinarily, the priority dates tend to advance or move forward in October of each year. But this time in October 2021, there's been little or no movement. So what's going on? Why are the priority dates stagnating? What can people expect for the coming months? Well, in this video, I will provide answers and explanations on what is going on with the priority dates. And a spoiler alert, the news will not be good for the coming months, which I will explain at the end of the video. Now, a little bit of background. Basically, when it comes to priority dates or the visa bulletin, it's an issue of supply and demand. Right now, there's more of a demand for immigrant visas than there is a supply. It's sort of like when a new iPhone comes out or is being introduced, there may be long lines outside the Apple store, but only a limited supply of new iPhones. So there could be a long wait. Or another analogy could be, let's say like a dam. Uh, you have the dam and then there's water behind the dam. If the water rises too high, they open up the floodgates to let it go down. On the other hand, if the water is too low, they close the floodgates so the water comes back up again. Same with visas. If there is a sufficient demand for visas, they open the gates or advance the priority date. But if there are too many people applying for visas and only a limited supply of visas, they close the gates and either stagnate the priority dates or retrogress. So that's basically what is going on. Now, under U.S. immigration law, there is an annual worldwide limit on family-based visas of 226,000. And then for employment, the limit is 140,000. Each country has a limit of 7% of the total annual visas or each country gets 25,620 visas. So imagine a large pizza pie, and each country only gets a 7% slice, no matter how populated that country may be. That's why some countries, such as China, India, or even the Philippines, have such a long wait for their visas, because there are so many more people applying for immigrant visas than there is a supply. In fact, Charlie Oppenheim, who's the State Department's person in charge of publishing the monthly visa bulletin, has provided his opinions and projections on the future movement of priority dates. And I wanted you to be able to hear it from the source. First, Charlie predicts there may actually be retrogression in the employment-based categories or the priority dates moving backwards. I'm, I can't really estimate how much the employment retrogressions may be or how soon they will occur. Uh, I just wanted to alert all the viewers and readers of the Visa Bulletin that the retrogression was a potential uh, action. Uh, we At the beginning of October, I will make uh, a review of the amount of demand that we have in-house and come uh, immigration service demand, which is expected to reach us in the near future. Uh, so again, I will monitor USCIS use of the numbers to determine when it's going to actually be necessary for the retrogression. And should a retrogression be required, the goal is always to have them be a, a one-time retrogression uh, to minimize future use, but still have the potential for uh, forward movement at a certain point later in the year if the le current level of demand were to subside and allow such movement. Charlie also expects increased demand on the limited supply of visas when the posts or embassies around the world start reopening and issuing immigrant visas. Remember, the embassies have been closed for at least a year because of the COVID and have not been issuing visas. 
and they've only recently started reopening. In fact, I posted a video on embassy reopenings. Another consideration I have to do is the fact that uh, my overseas posts have the potential to dramatically increase their use of numbers uh, in the coming months as they begin to return to normal processing. Uh, and those offices are going to be catching up on cases that may not have been addressed you know, in the past year or so because of the pandemic uh, consideration. And this is a really a perfect example of how the visa availability situation must be constantly monitored and adjustments made uh, you know, throughout the year. Charlie also predicts there will be no movement in the family categories for the next couple of months. He explains why, which is there is already enough demand for the available supply of visas in relation to the annual limit. The family-sponsored and employment uh, final action dates were advanced at a, some, uh, at a pretty regular pace uh, since March 2020, when the COVID 2000 or 20 the COVID 19 issues first began, you know, became an impact on our processing. Uh, the reason I, we moved the dates is was to generate sufficient demand to maximize number of use once uh, the processing became possible at our post. Uh, and as we enter fiscal 2020, those movements have already generated enough demand to potentially use all available numbers at least early in the early months in the family uh, issuance targets, <laughs> excuse me, uh, based, again, based on the current immigration and nationality guidelines. And what I, we do on a monthly basis when determining the final action dates is determine how many numbers under the annual limit we would like to be used for that particular month and then advance the final action dates accordingly to allow that target to be reached. But again, we already have enough demand based on the uh, established dates to fully utilize all of the numbers uh, for the foreseeable future. Many people ask about whether the case could be expedited, but Charlie explains cases are processed in a first come, first served basis once a person is documentarily complete or qualified in terms of submitting all the forms and paying all their fees and their priority date is current. The reason for this no expedite policy is that everyone would come up with their own excuse or reason why their case should be expedited. So the State Department just does it on a first come first serve basis. There are certain limited situations where a case could be expedited, such as a child aging out. But ordinarily, you know, if you say I got a sick relative, I'm anxious, I waited too long, I wanna to get to the US as soon as possible, so please expedite my case. Those sort of reasons will not justify your case being expedited. Virtually anybody could come up a with a reason why their case, their specific case should be expedited. And it wouldn't be fair for my case to be expedited ahead of the other person's because I came up with a better story or whatever. So again, everybody is treated equally by the use of the final action dates. Charlie also predicts there will be no movement in family-based categories at least through January 2022, which is really very disappointing. On the worldwide family dates, Nobody should expect any type of movement before January. I do not, at this time, based on the information available, I do not expect any movement of the family-sponsored worldwide dates for three to six months and potentially longer than six months. Again, we have such a sufficient demand that based on the already established dates, to fully utilize uh, all available numbers. And finally, on the October 2021 Visa Bulletin itself, which is posted on their website, in section F, it lists the visa availability in the coming months, which we see here that there will be no movement based on the current supply and demand. In fact, for people from the Philippines, where right now the employment-based third preference category or EB3 has been current for a long time, 
a final action date could be imposed as early as November 2021, which could result in longer delays and waits for Filipinos who want their immigrant visas in an employment-based category. Now, I know this information is very disappointing to so many of you out there who are under petition or are just waiting for your family members to be issued their visas or just status. But I hope you found this video helpful and informative as to what is going on and why the waits are so long as well as the delays. In the meantime, make sure to keep either the USCIS or the National Visa Center updated on any changes that may have occurred in your case, such as maybe you moved and you have a new address. You have to notify them of that new address. Maybe there was a beneficiary who was petitioned as married and is now unmarried. Maybe they got divorced, annulled, or they're a widow or widower. Also, perhaps since the petition was filed, additional children, derivative children, have been born. We will continue to monitor this situation and keep you informed, as well as keeping you informed on the latest immigration news and developments. So please make sure to like, share, and subscribe to this channel. I'm Michael Gerfinkel, and thanks for watching U.S. Immigration TV.